When I heard the news, I was pretty much overwhelmed, I think, uh, is the best way to describe it, because I was, uh, I, I felt honored to have been nominated, but I saw the slate of, of really wonderful faculty members, colleagues who were there. It was a pretty long slate and good, good people. And I thought, boy, I'm, it's good to be among these folks. And then when, when I was told that I was a, the professor of the year, I kept thinking about all the people who had gotten it before me, including the founder of the department I'm in, Father Whalen. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a long line of, of, of fine people, and I feel so privileged to be among those. It's particularly rewarding to be up there with, with Pete Perilla and Steve Hatting and Michael Jordan. Uh, three people came the same year I did. And, uh, uh, you know, so that just makes it kind of all the sweeter to be with these, these guys who are my friends. I think that perhaps to a certain degree, uh, the faculty voting for me this time may have been also a kind of thank you from them for when I was dean. Uh, I, I always tried to make decisions in conversation with the faculty, with the students. Uh, I tried to be both a student and faculty advocate and, and always try to maintain the integrity of the curriculum that was created by the faculty. And, and so I think, uh, I think probably a lot of people who voted for me uh, appreciated that when I was dean I kept teaching a course. Um, I, I uh, had my door open all the time for students who needed to come and talk about issues, problems, concerns, and I think the faculty knew that. And so that was one way of saying that, uh, thanks, you didn't stop being one of us even when you were in administration. The way I made the decision to apply for the, for the dean's job, first it was an interim dean for a year, then they did a national search, and, and I happened to get the interim in, and the uh, a regular dean's job, and uh, I was perfectly happy in my uh, journalism mass communication office and, and hadn't thought of applying for the interim post at all, and I actually was approached by three different faculty individually outside my department who were very different in ideologically in the way they looked at things, and that made me think that maybe I had something to contribute. And there was a lot that I did enjoy about it. That's why I, I stuck with it for, for eight years. I loved uh, the opportunity to, to support faculty, uh, to develop different types of, uh, uh, you know, supporting them in the classroom, uh, uh, supporting the best I can in both their scholarship and their teaching. I, I enjoyed working with developing the curriculum. Uh, it, was, it was good to be, have a hand in, in hiring across the disciplines. And, and contributing to that and making, making arts and sciences, but also University of St. Thomas a stronger place because of the, the great teachers we could hire. It's important that all of us know how much good work's being done here by a whole range of people across the disciplines. And I, I know for the longest time when I was dean, I felt that that was one of my uh, primary reasons for being here was to uh, be a cheerleader for the people who are doing this work. Because I, I, I told the faculty that every year, though. I read annual evaluations, and I was, they said, oh, it must be awful to read all those things. I said, it isn't. I said, because I get to see what great work people are doing. I'm also very proud that I had a hand in, in what I describe as bringing service learning in from the margins when I was dean, because I thought that was something that served the best interests of the students and the curriculum. I remember as department chair writing about this was the direction that, that was occurring in higher education, and I said that this department can be a leader in this because we've been doing that for years. I'm proud of it because I, I believe in active learning and uh, this, this uh, collaborative learning with students in one way or another, the way the sciences do it, or this, this community-based learning that we call service learning. This, is, this is, gives the students a chance to apply what they're learning. And I thought this was always in their best interest, as well as the best interest of the faculty who would have a chance to work with students in a different way. In COACH 0111 especially, we spend a good chunk of the semester introducing concepts and theories about 
communication and society and communication and identity and communication and citizenship. And when the students go to Cristo Rey, we guide them so that they are actually letting us know and, and, and becoming aware of how those concepts and theories apply to working with these students there. I just got through reading essays for this semester on the experience. And uh, it, over and over again, you hear the same thing. I thought I understood this when I heard it in the classroom, heard it in the lecture, heard it, picked it up in discussion, read it in an article or the text. But now I really get it because I can see how this concept works in a real world setting. How did your days as a reporter influence you as a teacher? It's a good question. Um, in the early days of my teaching, I think it certainly gave me a context and perspective when I was teaching reporting and news writing, which I, don't, I haven't done for a few years. And so I was able to, I think, enrich my own materials with what I had learned. The successful teachers have passion about the subject matter, and the students feel that passion. And you know when they feel it, and that's one of the great things about teaching. When you're in the classroom, and the students get it, and you're riding there with them, and you see it. It's great. <laughs> it's a great feeling. So you have that passion, but you also need to present that material. Passion isn't enough. The ideas you're, you're trying to get across have to be clear. When I first came to St. Thomas, I knew I'd come to the right place. My first, first class day, I'm getting ready to leave my office to go to my class, and here comes Father Whalen down the hall from teaching. And he's walking along, and he's got books and papers going this way and that way, and he stops in front of me as I'm coming out. He reaches in, pulls out a handkerchief, and wipes his brow, and he looks at me, and he says, if I don't work up a sweat in that class, I'm not doing my job. And I thought, yes, <laughs> I've come to the right place. Start of a semester, it's still exciting, and I'm still nervous going into class the first day. And it's that, uh, you get your energy from that. I mean, you're still, I'm still excited about it, so if I'm still excited about it, you know, that kind of feeds and creates the energy, I think. And, and, and I want to do well, and I owe it to the students to do well. So even when you have a thousand deadlines and all sorts of things you're working on, and you, you still, want to do your best going in that classroom. You know, that's the priority. The big challenge, I think, of teaching today, particularly in an institution like St. Thomas, is you have a, have a whole range of abilities and interests in the classroom. And the big challenge is how can I reach all of those people? How can I not tell them they have to come up to this level, but how can I help them get up to that level? At the same time, the third thing is to know if they know you want them to succeed. I'm not trying to, to trick you up. I want you to learn this stuff, and what can I do to, you know, I'm, I'm here for you, I'm cheering for you, get it. When I meet with these, these students, these people who were my students, it isn't so much that I'm thinking of them as, wow, I had a hand in where you are now. You don't do that. You just take pleasure in being with them. Um, they're these successful people, thoughtful people, and, and we talk about what they're doing and why they're doing it, and quite often we, we share books and ideas, recommend readings to one another, and it's just, it just is, is a great pleasure to see how they've grown. I always said that even, even within the four years of college, I think one of the really interesting, delightful things is to watch if you teach first-year students and then have them their junior and senior year. The maturity, the growth is incredible. You mentioned literary journalism, and I probably, I, I think broadly I'd describe my scholarship in the area of, of, of journalism history, but it's increasingly become uh, narrowed into, into literary journalism historically and, and in a contemporary sense. And um, I think my biggest contribution as a scholar in that area has been simply to, to help define the area of study. Uh, to, to help identify it as a type of genre and, and, and identify you know, people who have been doing this for at least 100 plus years. When it came time to apply to schools, I wanted to go to a school that had a strong mission and I wanted it to be in an urban area and I was very fortunate to, to land here.